Hello, it's Chew Dog Charts, and today I kind of feel like a matchmaker because today we're going to talk about romance and relationships. Recently, a rocky relationship between stocks and blondes. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. I, I don't mean stocks and blondes. I mean stocks and bonds. I guess I have an over-enthusiastic art director. So, okay. All right. Maybe today's topic won't be so sensational, but if you stick with me, I promise this video will be very insightful. And that's because historically, there are certain truths about the way the stock and bond markets moved and their relationship between them. A casual glance at what's going on now, though, could easily lead one to conclude that those relationships have completely broken down. It's a confusing world, but logic suggests that these are temporary phenomena, and those that have come to trading and investing in the last few years and know nothing else are in for a rude awakening when this order reasserts itself. The most obvious distortion is in the relationship between stocks and bonds. Conventional wisdom has it that when stock prices go up, bond prices go down. In other words, bonds and stocks have an inverse relationship. Now, the logic behind this is simple. Investors have to choose between the safety or relatively low return of bonds or the risky nature but the relatively high return of stocks. If you're fully invested and you have to sell one in order to buy the other, the bond price tend to drop when stock prices are rising and vice versa. As logical as that sounds, the exact opposite has occurred on many occasions over the last several years. Stocks and bonds have risen and fallen in tandem. And this strange behavior, however, can be explained in just two words. The Fed. And according to the Fed, though, a new era is about to begin. And so with that announcement of quantitative tapering, or QT, which is where the Fed is going to begin selling assets or selling bonds, we should expect a change. And with that change, I believe the relationship between stocks and bonds will be back to the old romance. So let's take a look. And before I begin, I want to bring something to your attention that uh, struck me last week, which was an interview of Ray Dalio in uh, Davos, Switzerland. And the picture here is of Ray Dalio. And Ray is the founder of Bridgewater, which is the largest hedge fund in the world. And they manage about $160 billion. And Ray Dalio started the firm in 1975 out of his two-bedroom apartment in New York City. And he's now worth about $17 billion. And he had an interview, though, while in Davos, Switzerland last week which kind of struck me on uh, a few notes. And so I'm going to read some excerpts from a couple of articles to you and uh, make some comment on it. But uh, according to uh, one article, it uh, states that Bridgewater Associates founder Ray Dalio said the tax cut could lead to some big gains for the U.S. stock market. And the tax cut he's talking about is the recent tax cut that was passed by Congress. He goes on to say that we are in this Goldilocks period right now. Inflation isn't a problem. Growth is good. Everything is pretty good with a big jolt of stimulation coming from changes in the tax laws. And then he further states that we're in this late part of the cycle and predicts we will see a market blow-off rally fueled by cash from banks, corporations, and investors. And he further states that there's a lot of cash on the sidelines. We're going to be inundated with cash, he said. If you're holding cash, you're going to feel pretty stupid. And what I think he means by that is that if you're holding cash while we have this market rally, you're going to feel pretty stupid sitting on the sidelines. But the one thing to begin with here that uh, sort of struck me is that I've shown you in recent videos that at least reported there are very low, record low levels of cash for both institutions and retail investors. So that doesn't jibe with what he's saying here. Now, I can't say the same about corporations and perhaps that recent tax uh, cut, which is going to impact 
corporations and their overseas funds may help because these corporations like Apple and some of these other larger corporations are going to repatriate a lot of that cash from overseas. And then that may help perhaps to some degree if they're going to start uh, buying back stock that could help a rally. But I was also struck by another portion of his interview, and I'm going to read from another article by Market Watch. So asked what could upset benign economic conditions and the resulting party and risk assets, Dalio pointed the finger at tighter monetary policy. And he said, I think the Fed is going to tighten faster than they are really signaling. Further here into the article, let's see, he says that... Uh, the Federal Reserve is willing to ratchet up interest rates as the economy kicks into higher gear. And he states that assets themselves are more sensitive and a 1% rise in bond yields will produce the largest bear market in bonds since the 1980-81 period. Your memory may not go back that far, but at the turn of the 1980s, we had a... Uh, a healthy combination of high employment and inflation that pretty much devastated the U.S. economy and drove the 10-year yield to a record high of 15.68% in October 1981. And so what also struck me about this portion of the interview is that he's saying here that a, uh, a rise in the bond yields could produce the largest bear market in bonds. I'm not sure if we can have a bear market in bonds with higher bond yields and at the same time a rally in the stock market. So perhaps he's talking about two different time periods because that's not clear to me. But let's go to some charts here and show you what I'm talking about with regard to bonds and how they can impact the stock market. And this chart here shows you what Ray Dalio was speaking about with regard to a 1% rise in the bond yield and the fiscal impact that it will have. And as the table shows, the impact of a 100 basis point, essentially a 1 percentage point, 100 basis points is 1 percentage point. So in 1989, on the very left side of the chart, a 1% rise in the bond yield would have a $200 billion fiscal impact. Here in 2017 or 2018, a 1% rise in the bond yield will now have a $1.2 trillion impact. So, pretty sensitive. All right, let's go to the next chart. So now this chart here is the first of two charts that I'm going to be showing you. And these charts are by NorthmanTrader.com. This chart here is the CBOE 10-year U.S. Treasury yield goes back to 1988. What's important here is the, the red portion of the chart. That's essentially the 10-year bond yield. And then at the very top of those spikes or rises in the bond yield is a trend line in sort of a light blue color. Now, what's important here are the the two areas there around 2006 to 2008. We have a yellow circle and then a purple circle. And then here in 2017, 2018, we have another set of circles, one yellow and one purple. Back to the uh, 2006 to 2008 time frame, you see that the bond yield went and just touched the trend line there in the yellow circle. Whereas in the purple circle, the bond yield just pierces slightly through that downtrend line. And then now we have 2017 to 2018. The yellow circle shows the bond yield heading up and just touching that trend line and kissing off that. But then in the purple circle, the bond yield has pierced through the trend line just marginally. So now let's go to the next chart. And this last chart here is the most important chart. And as you know, I always save the most important chart for the last. So you have to watch the entire video. Now, this chart here is in three segments. The upper portion is the S&P 500. 
the central portion in red is the treasury of the 10-year yield and then the lower portion is the unemployment rate and beginning with the unemployment rate here if you can see my cursor I'll do the best that I can as a small cursor in the 2000-2001 time frame we see that unemployment was at a relative low moving on up we see in the 10-year Treasury that the yield came up to just about that trend line did not pierce through but it uh, looks like it touched it now moving up in a general sense into the S&P 500 and we see that it generally coincides the 10-year Treasury generally coincides with the peak of the S&P 500 right before the dot-com crash moving on down to the unemployment rate again in the 2007 time frame we see that unemployment at a relative low again moving up into the 10-year Treasury here in mid 2007 we see that the 10-year yield pierced through the trend line now we move on up again in a general sense and we see that that uh, roughly coincides with the peak of the S&P 500 right before the great financial crisis and moving down here again into the modern period 2017 and 2018 we see that the unemployment rate is at a relative low and in some respects perhaps a record low moving on up to the 10-year Treasury and as you saw from a previous video the yield rate has pierced through that trend line and moving on up we see here the S&P 500 and that purple circle and then these two question marks here are for well what should we expect for the future we have to keep in consideration that the 10-year yield is tied to so many things in the economy it's tied to mortgage rates home loan rates it's tied to student loan rates it's tied to auto loan rates it's tied to credit card and revolving credit rates and as you had seen also in a previous video that a 1% rise in that yield can have a 1.2 trillion dollar impact on the economy so the relationship between the 10-year yield and the stock market is significant and I think that the old romance between the bond and the stock market is becoming fashionable once again so keep your eyes out for today that's chew dog charts thank you